the science team concluded that the moon is shrinking. Earth's pole is massaging our moon, causing moonquakes and geological processes, i.e., the moon is not a big dumb dead rock with nothing happening on the surface at all whatsoever. All while shrinking the moon, pushing it away, and slowing its rotation. Awesome. We didn't really need our moon or anything, right? Good morning, folks. Are you cool? Hey, everybody. It's your head jump. Because I'm going to be dropping some hard Thor News science upon you. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Hit the Button, Baby. Hey, guess what? The moon is shrinking, and it's all Earth's fault. Now, don't get mad at me for saying this. This is brought to us by Science Daily, your source for the latest research news. You see, Earth's pull is massaging our moon. Earth's gravity has influenced the orientation of thousands of faults that form in the lunar surface as the Earth shrinks. It came as a surprise to me. I didn't know the moon was shrinking, man. Earth's gravity has influenced the orientation of thousands of faults that form in the lunar surface as the moon shrinks, according to the new results. Maybe the moon just got in some cold water, and that caused the shrinkage? Easy jokes are never that funny. I had no freaking clue the moon was shrinking. Thanks, NASA. Wow, you are filled with lots of information. Turns out, the mystery is bigger than anyone imagined. The gravitational forces the moon and sun exert are responsible for Earth's rising and falling tides. Earth's gravity also exerts forces on the moon in the form of solid body tides that distort its shape. The moon is slowly receding away from the Earth, and forces build as the moon's tidal distortion diminishes with distance. Say that three times real fast. And its rotation period slows with time. These tidal forces, combined with the shrinking of the moon from cooling off of its interior, have influenced the pattern of orientations in the network of young fault scarps. I think a scarp is a scarf made out of scampies. Okay, that was stupid. This sounds like some serious science. Are you ready? Earth's gravity has influenced the orientation of thousands of faults that form in the lunar surface as the moon shrinks, according to the new results from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, spacecraft. In August 2010, researchers using images from LRO's narrow angle camera, the NAC, reported the discovery of 14 cliffs known as lobate scarps on the moon's surface in addition to about 70 previously known from the limited high-resolution Apollo panoramic camera photographs due largely to their random distribution across the surface. The science team concluded that the moon is shrinking. That is fascinating. Man, I guess everything shrinks when it gets older. These small faults are typically less than 6.2 miles long and only tens of yards or meters high. They are most likely formed by a global contraction resulting from cooling of the moon's still hot interior. As the interior cools and portions of the liquid outer core solidify, the volume decreases. Thus, the moon shrinks and the solid crust buckles. Yeah, you better buckle in. Earth's going to take the moon for a ride. Now, after more than six years in orbit, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera has imaged nearly three-fourths of the lunar surface at high resolution allowing the discovery of over 3,000 more of these features. These globally distributed faults have emerged as the most common tectonic landform on the moon. An analysis of the orientations of these small scarps yielded a surprising result. The faults created as the moon shrinks are being influenced by an unexpected source, gravitational tide forces from Earth. So the Earth is shrinking the moon. All right, global contraction alone should generate an array of thrust faults with no particular pattern in the orientations of the faults because the contracting forces have equal magnitude in all directions. This is not what we found, says Smithsonian senior scientist Thomas Watters of the National Air and Space Museum in Washington. There is a pattern in the orientations of the thousands of faults and it suggests something else is influencing their formation, something that's also acting on a global scale massaging and realigning them. Waters is the lead author of the paper describing this research published in October issue of the journal Geology. Okay, so we've got some thrusting, some massaging, and some shrinking. Why does celestial physics always have to be filled with sexual undertones and innuendos? The other forces acting on the moon come not from its interior, but from Earth. These are tidal forces. When the tidal forces are superimposed on the global contraction, the combined stresses should cause predictable orientations of the fault 
scarps from region to region. The agreement between the mapped fault orientations and the fault orientations predicted by the modeled tidal and contractual forces is pretty striking, says Watters. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, the moon shrinking. The moon shrinking and the Earth's getting bigger. Crazy days indeed. The discovery of so many previously undetected tectonic features as our LROC high-resolution image coverage continues to grow its fully is truly remarkable, said Mark Robinson of Arizona State University, co-author and LROC principal investigator. Early on in the mission, we suspected that the tidal forces played a role in the formation of tectonic features, but we did not have enough coverage to make conclusive statements. Now that we have NAC images with appropriate lighting for more than half the moon, structural patterns are starting to come into focus. I'm sorry this video is not very funny, but this is some hardcore science. The moon is shrinking, people. So much so that it's striking. What? The fault scarps are very young. So young that they are they are likely still actively forming today. Oh, so it's shrinking fast? Asterisk question mark. The team's modeling shows that the peak stresses are reached when the moon is farthest from the Earth in its orbit at apogee. If the faults are still active, the occurrence of shallow moonquakes related to slip events on the faults may be most frequent when the moon is at apogee. This hypothesis can be tested with a long-lived lunar seismic network. Yeah, good luck with that, buddy. With LRO, we've been able to study the moon globally in detail, not yet possible with any other body in the solar system beyond Earth. And the LRO data set enables us to tease out subtle but important processes that would otherwise remain hidden, said JK, LRO, PS, at NASA's GSFCGM, I, uh, I, uh, I only read the first letter of all that crap because I was feeling a little lazy because this article's been long. And I'm, I'm all super scienced, man. I'm all scienced out. <sighs> this is too much science for me to handle. Launched on June 18, 20, 2009, LRO has collected a treasure trove of data with its seven powerful instruments, making an invaluable contribution to our knowledge about the moon. LRO is managed by NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, under the Discovery Program managed by NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville. For the Science Mission Directorate at NASA's headquarters in Washington, D.C., yada, yada, yada. All right, maybe that's why they won't let us go back to the moon, because um, it's shrinking so fast that uh, they wouldn't want you to get stuck on it? No, nah, that's stupid. This article was brought to me and then brought to you by my girlfriend, Dragon Eyes. She likes the moon a lot. Hey, baby. I thought this was a good article. Lots of stuff going on with the moon. Apparently, it's all Earth's fault. I'm guessing the moon has been talking shit for a while now and finally pissed the Earth off. So she's using her tidal forces to eject him into someone else's orbit. Probably Venus. I heard she's been looking for a friend and rumor has it the man on the moon sings pretty good. I'm guessing from drinking all that space whiskey. Anyway, maybe that's why they want to put an asteroid in orbit about there. So here's the deal. Earth's pole is massaging our moon, causing moonquakes and geological processes. I.e., the moon is not a big dumb dead rock with nothing happening on the surface at all whatsoever. All while shrinking the moon, pushing it away, and slowing its rotation. Awesome. We didn't really need our moon or anything, right? Okay, wait, hold on. Let me get this straight. There's moonquakes, tectonic movement, the moon is getting smaller, and drifting further away from Earth, and its rotation is slowing down? And in 2011, NASA had to finally say the moon has an atmosphere. LOL. I love this shit. And I love you, baby. All right. God bless everybody. The moon is shrinking. And totally crazy. Just like you. And me. And NASA. God bless everybody.